In the last lecture, we learned how to solve Laplace's equation in MATLAB. I thought it'd be nice to also include a uh, lecture on how to solve both Poisson's and Laplace's equation in Mathematica. And again, the numerical technique is going to be similar to what we did in MATLAB, but we actually don't have to write the code to do it. In this case, it's built in. It's a built-in numerical solver. MATLAB also probably has a built-in numerical solver, but I think you need to buy a special toolbox to have it, okay? Um, but again, I like MATLAB because I'm a little bit better at the syntax with MATLAB. Mathematica can be pretty complicated, but it's just as capable uh, in a lot of ways. Okay, so we're gonna start by doing the more general case, which is Poisson's equation in 2D. And in this case, we're just saying that the uh, Laplacian of some in this case, vector field u, I could call it v, but in this case, u is what the example already had, is equal to 1, and we're going to solve it in two dimensions. Okay, in this program, you're going to see some things that refer, refer to the Dirichlet, which is a, a name of another math, mathematician condition, and that's just a fancy way of saying that we are telling the program what the values are at the boundary. Okay, there's different types of ways to specify boundary conditions, and they all get named after the mathematician that maybe came up with them. They're all kind of hard to pronounce. So the Dirichlet condition is just saying, hey, these are the values of the boundaries of the 2D space we are solving over. Uh, in this case, this first example, we are setting the boundary values equal to zero. And again, as we go through these examples, the syntax is complex. I literally stole these from some examples. Um, but it's nice to start with examples, and then you can change them and see if you can understand it. Okay, so here, uh, and actually I'm missing a negative sign here. Okay, here we're solving the Laplacian. Okay, this is basically saying, hey, the Laplacian in two dimensions, which is what this is all doing. So I could actually just copy this, paste it above and run it, and it would give me some code here. The Laplacian in two dimensions is equal to negative one. Okay, and there's actually, just so you guys know, there's two equal signs there, uh, which is, again, just something about what you have to do in Mathematica to get these things to solve. And then this is saying, hey, the boundaries of the space where we're solving this over are going to be equal to zero. Okay, again, very confusing way to set that. I want to solve, this is telling this, uh, ND solve value, which is a numerical solver that N, uh, when things start with N in Mathematica, that usually means they're numerical solvers instead of the analytical solvers. So I couldn't put things in this that didn't result in values and get an answer. Okay. But it says basically what I want to solve for with my numerical solver is the U values, uh, in the x and y direction. Oh, this says in the x and y directions, we're going to solve it over a region uh, of a disk. Okay. And this disk is going to default to a one by one disk or a disk with a radius one. Okay. When I run this, I get this as the output. It's a interpolating function in x and y, which basically is a way of saying there is no analytical solution to this. I can't write a nice equation that depends on X and Y to get a solution. Instead, what I'm getting is um, a bunch of numbers, okay, which is good because I put in values here where I could solve it and get a bunch of numbers. There isn't any unknown constants or anything else uh, in this statement of ND solve value, okay? So the solution looks something like what I have down here. This is saying plot uh, this last uh, output uh, over x and y um, equal to the disk. The solution uh, contour plot looks like this, where the potential is the height in the z direction. So if the charge density is basically constant and negative everywhere, or sorry, in this case it would be positive everywhere because the Poisson's equation has the negative in it, then you get a uh, solution for the potential that looks like this. So we've got positive charge density everywhere, it's constant. Uh, the potential is highest in the middle and lowest at the ends. And of course, if I took the gradient of this potential, I would find the electric field. And you could probably imagine what the negative gradient of this potential would look like. 
Okay, so that's Poisson's equation. Let's go down and come up with some solutions to Laplace's equation. That's what we were talking about mostly this week. So Laplace's equation just means we're setting the right-hand side equal to zero rather than negative one. This could never be a, a solution, this first one, to Laplace's equation because there is a maximum in our space where we're solving uh, the equation over. So here, uh, a little bit fancier, we've got Laplace's equation, but now we've got a boundary condition where we're letting the boundary not be at a constant value of zero, but we're letting it be equal to the sign of x and y, okay? Um, so the values uh, around our boundary are following a sine function, okay? So I can go ahead and run that again. We're getting this interpolating function, which means it's just a bunch of numbers, not a nice uh, equation for the solution. And I can plot that. And again, it's this idea that the solution is always going to be the most featureless surface that you can stretch between the boundaries. And here you can see it almost looks like a Pringle or something like that. Uh, the boundaries have waviness to their potential values. And the surface in the middle uh, is trying to fit those with a kind of continuous function, but a featureless function. All right, that's kind of fun. Uh, let's look at this one. Here we've got somewhat fancier boundary conditions. We've set uh, different boundary conditions depending on the value of x. So it's 0 for x being less than negative 0.3 and 1 for x being greater than 0.35. Okay, so again, if I run this solver, um, I'm going to get some interpolating function as the output. But here I can see what the solution looks like for that particular situation. The boundaries where I've set it are on this side here on the left hand side where the potential is set to zero for this. It's again, it's still a disk, so it's still going to be round. And I'm solving this potential over. On the right hand side, uh, the potential is set to uh, one. Okay, so that's why we get this slope here. But you can see, again, it's as featureless as it can be trying to solve those conditions or satisfy, sorry, those conditions. Uh, in order to kind of complete it, I thought we'd do a boring take. So this is the solution to Laplace's equation in one dimension. So these are two dimensional. We could do it in three dimensions, but let's just go back and do it in one dimension. So now this is saying, use that same numerical sol solver. Let's solve the Laplacian in one dimension. So I got rid of the x here. Okay, in one dimension, I still have to set boundary conditions. Here I'm just telling uh, the program what the potential should be equal to at uh, the two boundaries. So at um, x equals negative 1, I'm saying the potential is negative 1. And at x equals 2, I'm saying the potential is one half and then go ahead and solve for the potential over the one dimensional space from negative one to two and plot it. Here you can see the solution is indeed, as we expect, just a line that satisfies those boundary conditions. So this is the voltage versus distance. Okay. Because this is such a simple solution, we actually, we can just get interpolating function, but this is one that you can get a analytical solution to. So here I've used a non-numerical solver, so there's D solve value without the N. And for this particular case, I can get an analytical solution out or a function here that depends on X that gives me what the answer is. Notice um, here I'm still putting in the boundary conditions. So this is a specific solution, not a general solution. And I can still plot it and get a line, okay, because it's solved basically for what that slope is and for what the y-intercept is, okay. But because I can find a general solution, I can even be more simple and just ask um, Mathematica to solve this without the boundary values. To do that, instead of using D solve value, I'm just going to use D solve. And I put, again, similar stuff in Laplacian. That's what I'm trying to solve. I want to solve for the potential over this range. But I'm not including any information about boundary conditions. 
and it still gives the solution, but it's a general solution. So it's just saying, hey, it's a line with these constants C1 and C2, okay, but I don't know what those constants are because you didn't give me uh, enough information or the boundary conditions to solve for them.